As long as I can remember, I've always been really interested in 3D, whether it was playing games on my Virtual Boy or more recently my Nintendo 3DS, or watching 3D home movies on my home cinema projector. Over the years I even tried producing my own photos using a camera like this for example which produced split prints that were quite narrow and had to be viewed through this stereoscope type device. Or earlier than that I had this thing which produced lenticular prints that took forever to develop and cost a fortune but actually produced pretty decent results. So naturally when Sony brought out a 3D bloggy I was quite interested until I saw the price. For £250 I thought well it can stick it I'm not going to bother with that one. But shortly after it came out the price started dropping like a stone and eventually it got to the kind of price point where I thought well I might as well give it a try and see what it's like. So I got one in to test it out and here it is. Inside the rather upmarket box you get the camera and a little USB extension lead and a lanyard and that's it. The camera itself looks reasonably nice I suppose, it's very plasticky. It doesn't have a touch screen, that screen on the back is just a normal LCD screen. Now let's just have a look around the device here. First off you've got a little button here that when you press it the USB thing pops out there and you could hold it by that while you were charging that but it's advisable to use a little extension lead that comes on it. Behind here is a micro HDMI socket. On the bottom here we've got a plastic tripod hole. And on the top of it here you've got stereo microphones, a speaker in the middle, an on off button which we're just pressing now. And down on the right here you've got a four way D-pad with a record start stop button in the middle. And to the left of that you've got three buttons which line up with what's going on on the screen. So we'll press the middle button which changes it into 3D mode. Now the screen does go into 3D mode which of course you can't see on the camera but it also makes it really really grainy. It's very poor in that mode. But we'll just press the menu button now to show you what's inside the various different menus. You can change the photo size between three different settings there. You can change the video between a few different settings including 720p 60 and 1080p 30 and then the 720p30 and then there's a kind of a low res one if you really wanted to use that. The bottom menu is a setup one uh, where we can go into the different settings such as turning the beep on and off and a few different uh, things it really you probably don't need to mess around with and that's about it as, other than setting the time and date. So there's nothing else to the camera than that it's very simple. Now the bottom button at the moment signifies play so we'll press that one and that brings up the playback menu which we can select using that four-way d-pad. Notice there on the right you've got a 3D clip which has a 3D emblem next to it so you can see which ones are 3D. And When you play those the camera goes into 3D mode and starts displaying it as a 3D film. Now at the bottom here you've, it tells you what's going on with that d-pad. If you press it in those four directions you can adjust the volume, fast forward, pause, rewind and go back to the menu again. Now this screen here looks grainy on the camera but it actually looks just as bad if not worse in real life. It, the 3D playback on the screen is pretty useless, it's not something that I would recommend anyone doing. And then when you're in playback mode you can delete files, protect them and adjust the uh, amount of 3D on them if you wanted to, a little bit like the slider on the Nintendo 3DS. Now the top right button there is a photo button, a dedicated shutter button that you just press, hold down and it takes a photo and you can take photos as 3D or 2D photos, depending on which mode you've set the camera in. And then we can turn the light on and off on the front here, which is just to illuminate the scene. And you've got telly and wide, which of course is zoom at, uh, if you press up and down. It's not an optical zoom, it's a digital zoom, so again, always best to stay away from those. And on the right there you've got a self-timer if you wanted to use that, which I think would be a bit hard to use a self-timer on this camera, because you wouldn't really be able to prop it up on a wall. But that's about it as far as that goes, so let's just switch it off again. And that's pretty much everything. Now that button on off and shutter are next to each other so it's very easy to press the wrong one and turn the camera off when you mean to take a picture. But rather than go on about some other problems I've got with the camera let's just go on about some sample footage now. Now I've actually got some raw footage as well on my website techmoan.com there's a link in the video description but let's without any further ado show you some sample footage from the camera.
Right, now you should know by now that YouTube re-renders the video footage that I put up and also I put this out in 720p30. So you won't see 720p60 and you won't see 1080p30 on YouTube. The only way to see these real files would be to download them from the link on my website. I'm just trying to give you a bit of an idea here. Now the reason I'm showing this bit is because this is what the 3D footage looks like when you just play it back without using proper 3D playback equipment. Now yes, I could have uploaded some 3D footage to YouTube but because of the way it re-encodes things it'd look pretty bad so I think I'd rather people try to download some real clips from my website and play them back on their own 3D playback equipment to get a proper feel for it. Now I really only bought this camera for its 3D capabilities. I wasn't too interested in its 2D abilities because I've got plenty of other 2D cameras. But I'm just showing you some of the 2D footage now to give you an idea as to how the camera copes with light and dark and sharpness and things like that. And overall it does quite a decent job. It's pretty good in 1080p mode, not as good in 720p mode where of course it goes quite a bit softer. But overall it's probably as good as any other pocket HD camera that I've tried. I believe some of the bloggies have a bit of a delay in focusing. I didn't really notice that on this particular model. It seemed to be fine as far as that was concerned. Now I'll just finish off this short segment with a few photos. It does take photos. I've took them in five megapixel mode. If you take them in 3D mode, it's more zoomed in. So look at this, this is a normal photo. And then this is a 3D one, not that you of course you can see it in 3D, but notice it zooms in towards the middle. I'll just show you that again. So that's a normal photo. And then that's the same position, but with the 3D switched on. Now, of course, to watch the 3D photos, you're going to have to have the right equipment and download some of the 3D photos again from my site if you got the right stuff to show them on. But anyway, the problem with this camera that I was going to mention there, but I skipped past, is the fact that the image stabilization doesn't work in 3D mode. I mean, this is a fatal flaw. It works nice in 2D mode, but in 3D mode, everything goes really, really shaky, so much so that... I can't really watch the clips, they're incredibly annoying. Now it does have a tripod hole on the bottom here, but that's not the bottom, that's the side when you've got it in 3D mode like this. So you can't really put it on a tripod unless you get one that's sort of a bit bendy or something. Now the other thing is the 3D footage isn't very 3D. Look at the two lenses here, look how close they are together. That's not gonna produce much of a 3D effect. I mean, look how far apart your eyes are. They're not like that. You should have the other 3D lens way over on the other side of the camera there. And that would have given some sort of decent 3D effect. But with lenses this close together, anything more than a couple of feet away doesn't go into 3D mode. A minor niggle is this orientation sensor that turns the video footage and menus round when you turn the camera. But if you try and record in 3D mode, of course, it says you've got to hold the camera the other way because, of course, the lenses aren't side by side. But the fact that it's got this sensor is rather annoying because whenever you tilt the camera, it blanks the screen and tries to turn the menus around, which just gets on your nerves after a while. So overall then, it isn't a very good 3D camera, it's alright as a small pocket camera, but the whole point that I bought this thing for was to film 3D, and it's terrible at doing 3D, it's hardly worth bothering at all. So I didn't, I went and sold it, I put it back on eBay again, only two or three weeks after buying it, and sold it for a little bit less so I could go and get another camera. And guess what I got? Another bloggy. Now why would I do this? Well the reason is because I wanted to try out this one's 360 video recording capabilities. And that uses this thing which should attach to the previous camera that I had, the 3D one. But you try buying one of these anyway, it's virtually impossible. The only way to get hold of one in the UK is to go and buy it included in a box with the camera. So that's what I did. But that's a whole different story for another day. As far as this 3D camera goes, if you want to try and view View some of that 3D footage, remember you can click on the link in the video description, but for the moment, thanks for watching.